Good morning. And, <laughs> and welcome to Fairfield College Preparatory's graduation of the class of 2014. My name is Tony Fox, and on behalf of my fellow classmates, I would like to welcome all of those visiting Fairfield Prep and sharing in this special day. Today, you join the class of 2014 in embracing the future and what it has in store for us while remembering our time spent here at Prep. It is at Fairfield Prep where you have seen us mature into the young men we have become today. It is at Fairfield Prep where we have seen ourselves develop into men for others. I would like to specially recognize Father Hanwell of the Society of Jesus, our president, and Dr. Parada, our principal, the members of the prep faculty and staff, and the members of the Board of Governors, as well as to extend a warm welcome to the members of the class of 1964 who will be receiving their golden diplomas today. I would like to extend a special welcome to the most reverend Frank Caggiano, Bishop of the Diocese of Bridgeport. We are very honored to have Bishop Caggiano as our graduation speaker. Our president, Father Hanwell of the Society of Jesus will now present the class of 1964. Thank you very much, Tony. Bishop Caggiano, members of the PrEP Board of Governors, Dr. Parada, PrEP's administration, faculty, and staff, dear parents, grandparents, other family and friends, members of the great class of 2014, and members of the golden class of 1964. The class of 1964 is reunited again at Fairfield Prep after 50 years, one full half century since some of you last saw one another when you graduated on Monday, June 8th at 7.30 p.m. right here in Alumni Hall for the 22nd prep graduation and the sixth class to graduate here in Alumni Hall. Bishop Walter Curtis of the Diocese of Bridgeport presented you your prep diploma. Sadly, 24 of your classmates have now been called home to God. A half century ago, much of the news in the United States was dominated by the actions of civil rights activists and those who opposed them. Our role in Vietnam was steadily growing, along with the costs of that involvement. The final months in the fall of your senior year were sadly punctuated by one of the most tragic events in American history, the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. 1964 does seem today so long ago, so let's take a brief walk down memory lane. As school commenced for your senior year, the major news for all Roman Catholics was the Second Vatican Council, which opened the previous year by Pope John XXIII, now Saint John XXIII. The Council drastically altered the tone and direction of the Church, and it directly affected the lives of Catholics. Changes brought about by the Council included having the priest face the congregation and switching the language of the Mass from Latin to the vernacular. And Catholics were now permitted to eat meat on Fridays, except during the season of Lent. The Ninth Winter Olympics were held in Innsbruck, Austria. The G.I. Joe action figure was introduced for young boys. 
the Ford Mustang is introduced. Sidney Poitier became the first African American to win the Best Actor Oscar for Lilies of the Field. President Lyndon B. Johnson declares war on poverty. 74, Amer 74 million Americans watched the first appearance of the Beatles on The Ed Sullivan Show. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. won the Nobel Peace Prize. U.S. Surgeon General Luther Terry reports that smoking may be hazardous to your health. Cigarette smoking is enjoyed by 60% of the United States population in 1964. The Sharpie marker was introduced. Pop-Tarts were also introduced, and breakfast time became easier and tastier, but probably not healthy. The miniskirt was introduced, si signaling the rapidly changing values of the decade. Moving to the prices right in 1964, a movie ticket was, get ready, a dollar twenty-five. A dozen of eggs was fifty-four cents. A first-class stamp was five cents. And get ready to moan. A gallon of gasoline, thirty cents. Oh, those good old days. Moving to the world of sports, the 1964 Stanley Cup Final was contested by the defending champion Toronto Maple Leafs and the Detroit Red, Ring, Red Wings for the second straight year. Toronto won the series by defeating Detroit 4-3. The Boston Celtics defeated the San Francisco Warriors in the 1964 NBA Championship. The Celtics won the series 4-1. The St. Louis Cardinals beat the New York Yankees to win the World Series by 4-3. The Cleveland Browns defeated the Baltimore Colts 27-0 at Cleveland to win the 1964 NFL Championship. Moving to the world of entertainment, the 36th Academy Awards were presented on April 13. The nominees for Best Picture were America, America, Cleopatra, How the West Was Won, Lilies of the Field, and Tom Jones. And the Oscar for Best Picture went to Tom Jones. The six Grammy Awards were held on May 12th, and the Grammy for the Record of the Year was Henry Mancini's For Days of Wine and Roses. On TV, the following shows made their debut during your senior year. Bewitched. Peyton Place, Flipper, The Man from Uncle, and everybody's favorite Marine, golly, shazam, 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 it's Gomer Pyle. Gilligan's Island, just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship with Gilligan the skipper to the millionaire and his wife. The movie star, the professor and Marianne here on Gilligan's Isle. You ready for another one? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and ooky. They're all together spooky, the Adams family. Their house is a museum where people come to see them. They really are a scream, the Adams family. Da 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 You listened and rocked in your senior year to The Beatles, 
She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you. <laughs> the Dixie Cups, Chapel of Love. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. Go into the chapel and we're gonna get married. Gee, I really love you and we're gonna get married. Go in to the chapel of love. Mary, thank you. My CD will be available after commencement. All profits, of course, going to Fairfield Prep. One last one, Mary Wells, my guy. Nothing you can say can tear me away from my guy. Nothing you can do, cause I'm stuck like glue to my guy. I'm sticking to my guy like the stamp to a letter, like the birds of a feather. We stick together, I'm telling you from the start, I can't be torn apart from my guy. Thank you. You arrived at McAuliffe Hall at 9 a.m. on Friday, September 2nd, 1960, for your very first day of Fairfield Prep. And remember what Prep's tuition was in your freshman year? Parents, I think you better put your ears over your hands over your ears. $325. And when you graduated in 1964, the tuition, $350. That's why they call it the good old days. Your principal was Father Ed Fain. Your assistant principal was Father Al Morris. And the new dean of discipline, discipline was Father Larry O'Neill. And your guidance counselor was Little Caesar himself, Father Tommy Murphy. There were 25 Jesuits and 10 lay teachers at prep in your senior year. Your senior class officers were President Don Houston, Vice President Ken D'Amato, Secretary Sandy C., and Paul Murray Murphy, your treasurer. Today, we take for granted rapid modes of transportation, medical care that has vastly extended our lives, and telecommunications that has shrunk our world dramatically. 51 years ago this very month, President John F. Kennedy said, change is the law of life. Most people will acknowledge that change is a big part of life, but few could have anticipated the scope and pace of change that has affected our lives in just these last 50 years. From the payphone to Skype, from the jukebox to iTunes, from snail mail to electronic mail, from hard copy books to e-books, spiral notebooks to electronic notebooks, from the prep cheerleading club to the infamous bomb squad, from baggy pants, which you protested, to chinos, from passing notes in class to <clears throat> texting or tweeting in class, from the blackboard to the whiteboard, from listening to the radio or TV and praying for that prep snow day to connect Ed and that welcomely favorite 5.30 a.m. morning voice of Fairfield Prep. This is Colleen Keltos with a weather-related announcement from Fairfield Prep. <laughs> we love that voice, Colleen. From the first Catholic president to the first African-American president, from the grinning Dean of Discipline, Father O'Neill, to the smiling Mr. Brennan, the Navy SEAL. But prep students still today enjoy the same fun, the same academics, the same team spirit, and yes, still get jugged, but prepsters today don't have to make all those snowballs in the quad like you had to do, but above all, have maintained the same friendships as you had 50 years ago. You certainly prevailed these 50 years on what PrEP taught you, and you are here today to prove it. I am confident that what you learned at PrEP and the friendships you shared prepared you for the half century that followed. And I am thankful that today we can all share this wondrous milestone in your lives. Truly, you have served Fairfield PrEP incredibly well. 
And when you, get, when you arrive rather, at the pearly gates and meet St. Peter, remind him that you're from Fairfield Prep and that you're a man for others. On behalf of the entire Fairfield Prep community, it is a great pleasure to welcome each one of you back home to Prep. Congratulations to our golden alumni, class of 1964, and may God bless you and keep you in the palm of God's hand. May I ask that you do not applaud until all have received diplomas. Accepting golden diplomas on behalf of the class of 1964 are the following. John L. Altieri. John E. Barney. Leslie R. Boti. Francis X. Brandy. Thomas J. Burke. Robert Calamari, Gregory J. Carney, Thomas A. Comer. Thomas Doyle, Joseph A. Egan, Victor M. Ferranti. Robert Gould, James Gurton, Michael Horn. John C. King, Barry R. Lobsher, John J. Leary. James R. McCormick, Richard J. McGuire, Raymond B. McKelvey.
Ryan H. Morris. Francis M. Palumbo. David W. Pond. David J. Rizzardi. Joseph L. Stanek. Alexander A. Solzecki. Dominic J. Thomas. Robert L. Ptolemeo. Lawrence R. Zelensky. Congratulations. Nominated by his classmates and chosen by the awards committee to give the senior farewell address is Andrew Ostrowski. Good morning to the Fairfield Prep class of 2014. Family, friends, teachers, administrators, and especially Bishop Caggiano. Now, um, on the way here, I realized it was Sunday, uh, but I was here instead of Mass, so I just I hope you forgive me. Uh, uh, before I begin, I wanted to thank all of my classmates for giving me the honor of speaking today. Um, Mr. Cunningham, I see you back there. Uh, my teacher, my coach, and my friend once said that you only remember the beginning of the speech. That being said, I wanted to let you, the class of 2014, know that I love you. Um, now, I'm not sure if you all know, but about a month ago, I got seriously injured while playing rugby. I had an awful concussion, a zygomatic tripod fracture, and several more broken bones on the left side of my face. Thank God for plastic surgery. <laughs> my parents had previously warned me about this dangerous sport, and it unfortunately ended up being an I told you so moment. So my speech ends with this. Don't play rugby and listen to your parents. After the initial moments in the ambulance, my left eye swelled shut, my right eye closed soon after due to fatigue. I didn't open my eyes for three days. This time could be defined as dark, uncertain, and unfamiliar. These same characteristics 
to find our freshman year at prep. When we all began, we came from different places and different backgrounds. We didn't know many people, or at least I didn't. The relationships we made were based on the times we spent at mixers, or trying out for sports teams, or making the cast of the spring musical. Some of us were musically and theatrically gifted, while others excelled on the sports field. Some of us could run like gazelles, while others, well, others ran like Thomas Cirillo. <laughs> I love you, buddy. <laughs> now, fast forward four years to today, and the things I just mentioned are almost completely reversed. We have relationships now that are molded by a four-year journey that transformed these friendships into a brotherhood. No matter what it was, all of us in this class of 2014 made a transformation, and it has impacted our lives in such a, prof such a profound way. Our class in particular shares in a plethora of memories that made us what we are today. The sounds, smells, and chants that filled the whale on championship game day will never escape our memories. What do you get when you mess with prep? The time we spent in contemplative reflection during Kairos retreats will live on for days to come. The unyielding emotions we felt when we lost Bradley Helt and Dr. Lewis will fill us with grief, but will allow us to appreciate each other on a much deeper level. Rest in peace. Our time at prep, however, is now over. Some could say that it is like that freshman year again. We are going off to different places to meet unfamiliar faces and study new theories. Our days in the halls of Arupe, Xavier, and Berkman's cease to exist on a daily basis. We will no longer hear Mr. Brennan on the loudspeaker as he struggles to pronounce the surname of our beloved seven-foot basketball star, Pascal. <laughs> this is uh, Mr. Brennan. Well, uh, oh. Will Pascal Shakira come to my office? Cindy, did I get it right? <laughs> Mr. Brennan, we love you. But I refuse to go on and speak about our absence from prep. This is where I bring up my injury once again. The recovery went smoothly and rapidly. Despite a scar and a droopy lower left eyelid, I think I'm doing all right. I remember, though, the day I opened my eyes for the first time. I was awoken to the presence of my prep family. Friends, parents, even teachers. I later closed my eyes for another prolonged period of time, and when I woke up again, a prep flag hung proudly in my hospital room. To say the least, prep engulfed my life, and I could not be grateful enough for it doing so. While we may be leaving this place we called home for four years, I'm sure we all have a unique story that reflects this profound impact that it has had on our lives. Sure, we're all moving to different paths, but we are bonded by the relationships we made as prep men. We will always cherish that last announcement that Mr. Brennan made as we applauded him for several minutes, all the while tears overcoming the moment. This injury, although untimely and frustrating, seemingly opened my eyes to the fact that prep will forever be 
a part of me and each and every man wearing a white jacket and red bow tie. In one of my favorite movies, The Sandlot, the great Bambino, Babe Ruth, uttered to Benny the Jet Rodriguez, heroes get remembered, but legends never die. Follow your heart, kid. Now, while Babe was certainly a gifted man, I think he messed up that quote. This is how it should have been. Friendships get remembered, but a brotherhood never dies. Follow your heart, boys. Thank you. Our commencement speaker was born in Graveson section of Brooklyn, the second of two children of Arnaldo and Jennerina Cacaggio, both of whom came to this country in 1958 from the town of Caggiano in the province of Salerno, Salerno Italy. He grew up in Saints Simon and Jude Parish and attended the parish's grammar school. He then attended Regis High School in Manhattan our brother Jesuit high school, where he was a member of the class of 1977. He then attended Yale University as a political science major. After further discernment, he transferred into Cathedral College of the Immaculate Conception Seminary in Douglaston, New York, in January of 1978, where he graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor's of Art degree in philosophy in June 1981. He was ordained to the priesthood on May 16, 1987. In August of 1991, he pursued advanced studies in dogmatic theology at the Gregorian University in Rome, the very first Jesuit university, where he received a doctorate in sacred dogma in May of 1996. He then served in many important roles in Brooklyn, including parochial vicar of several parishes, dean of formation for the permanent diaconate program, pastor, director of the permanent diaconate office, and vicar for evangelization and pastoral life. He was named a papal chaplain by St. John Paul II in 2003. In addition to his work in the Diocese of Brooklyn, he is an outstanding teacher, as is evidenced by the Vatican selecting him twice to offer catechesis to the young people at World Youth Days in Madrid in 2011 and recently last summer in Rio de Janeiro. Following World Youth Day last summer, he then traveled to Ireland where he was selected by the Catholic bishops to help lead the Youth 2000 summer retreat. During his time as pastor, he also taught a number of theology classes at numerous Catholic universities, including Staten Island campus of St. John's University and St. Joseph's College. Monsignor Gerald A. Doyle, former administrator of the Bridgeport Diocese, praised him by saying, and I quote, the Holy Father has blessed us with a priest, pastor, and teacher with extensive experience at every level of diocesan ministries. Most importantly, he is a man of deep faith, love for the church, and commitment to the gospel. On behalf of the clergy, religious, and laity, we welcome him with open arms and with our prayers that God will bless him as the shepherd of our diocese." End quote. It now gives me such a profound pleasure to welcome him to Fairfield Prep. Please join me in welcoming our new bishop, Bishop Frank Caggiano, to Fairfield Prep.
Good morning. Let me just begin by saying I don't sing, if you were wondering. <laughs> Father Hanwell, members of PREP's Board of Governors, Dr. Perito, members of the administration, faculty, and staff, my dear parents and grandparents, relatives and friends of our graduates, the members of the class of 1964, and of course, the class of 2014. We gather here this morning with you graduates to celebrate your accomplishments with great joy and pride. Accomplishments you have achieved over these last four years in this marvelous journey as members of Fairfield Prep. My friends, you really do have much to be proud of, for you have accomplished much. Personally, over these last years, you have discovered and opened your minds and your hearts to all the gifts and talents that God has given to every single one of you. You have discovered in a new way how uniquely talented and blessed you are. You have discovered anew that each of you is a son of God called to greatness. You have been challenged by those who have formed you and love you to use your gifts and talents with confidence and in gratitude because God is the one who has given them to you. Academically, you have successfully completed a very rigorous course of study that has prepared you well for your collegiate career. And you have excelled with excellence in so many different ways. My friends, you and I know that these men have excelled even in the world of athletics. They have performed well, but they have always maintained that spirit of sportsmanship and fair play that marks a Christian gentleman. But most importantly, dear graduates, under the watchful eyes of your teachers, your parents, and all those who love you, here at PrEP, your Catholic faith has grown your love for the Lord Jesus has deepened, and you have risen to the call to have the courage to live your love concretely in so many ways these past years, to reach out to those who are in need, those who live in the shadows of our world. You have reached out to them in service. Graduates, Every single person in this room is proud of every single one of you. Not simply for the things you have accomplished, but because of the wonderful young men you have become, in part because you have been privileged to be here at PrEP. Every single one of us salutes you and thanks you for the wonderful men you have become in Christ. But gentlemen, you have much more work to do. For you have had the privilege to come not just to a Catholic high school, but to a Jesuit high school. A high school that lives the very life and spirituality and insight of St. Ignatius of Loyola himself. And my friends, as we know, St. Ignatius made as the bedrock of his, of his life and his ministry, the desire to identify, educate, and form in faith leaders for society and the church. You gentlemen, by here, being here at PrEP, you have been identified, educated, and formed in faith because you are being called 
to become leaders of our society and of the church, to be leaders among your peers, leaders wherever you go in college, and leaders for our larger society. It is a noble calling. It is a Jesuit calling. It is your calling today. So we can ask, what is it that you have been called to live? What is this gift of leadership you have been called to rise to? Jonathan Farrington, in an article a few years ago, defined leadership this way, my friends. He said, leadership is the ability to inspire willing change in others. That seems apt to describe what you have been asked to do. And it begins, brothers, in the very willingness to allow your own lives to be challenged and changed as they have over these last four years, to continue in your college years and beyond, to gain the self-knowledge, to know what your gifts and talents are, and to have the wisdom to know your limits, your faults, and your failures to seek the courage to know the truth and to live the truth. For the truth is not just something, it's someone. It is the Lord of life and love. It is Jesus himself. It is to be humble before God, who is the source of all blessings. And if, brothers, you are willing to live that leadership, allow yourself to continue to grow and change, then what you will discover is what we perhaps, my friends, have already discovered in our lives, that there will be a fire, a passion that will grow in your heart that will allow you to challenge the accepted wisdom that exists in our own time. For my friends, we have been told over and over again by so many people who want us to believe that our destiny as a country and as a church is doomed to be simply mediocre. We have been told time and time again that the status quo is broken and we can do nothing about it. We have been told over and over again that the best times for our country and our church are over. And I come here today, my friends, to tell us all and to remind you, my brothers and graduates, that the accepted wisdom is wrong. Our destiny is not condemned to mediocrity. Our destiny is to greatness in Jesus Christ. The status quo may be broken, but the horizon of your life and mine, my friends, is the dignity and creativity and the bright future that can come from the hands of God. And I know in my heart that the best times for our country and our church are being born before our very eyes. And it is that wisdom, this new wisdom, dear graduates, that is now going to be your challenge and mine to live. As you leave this room, look into the faces of the graduates of 1964. We have honored them today, and rightfully so, because they have taken up the mantle of leadership in their own age and in even our time. By their success and achievement, by their leadership in the church, by their generosity to those in need, they have inspired us, and they inspire you to follow in their great footsteps. Dear graduates, I ask you, as you leave this place, as you open a new chapter in your life, accept 
the mantle of leadership God is giving you as an alumnus of PrEP. Allow yourself to change and grow. Inspire others to action. And you will change the world for the better. In a world that wants you to believe my life is about me, never forget the lessons you have learned at PrEP. That a true Christian leader never uses people as a means to an end. That a true Christian leader never measures his success simply by the wealth he has accumulated. That a true Christian leader never forgets that the measure of a person's heart are the principles he or she lives by. And you have learned here fidelity to mission, passion for life, the value of discipline, and faith in God and in his church. Of all the unlikely places to get this quote, I turn to Napoleon, who once said, a leader is a dealer, an agent of hope. Gentlemen, you are going to college and you will prepare yourself for a world filled with many challenges, but I ask you to see those challenges as opportunities for change. You, this day, are becoming our missionaries of hope. By your leadership, your integrity, and all that you will bring to this world, you are our hope for a bright future. And so, my friends, allow me to conclude by sharing with all of you, but with you graduates in a special way, words that were said to me 37 years ago when I graduated from a similar Jesuit high school. Although we wore black bow ties, not red bow ties. <laughs> and the president of Regis stood at the podium as I am standing before you. And he said, for the rest of your days, in whatever you do, ad maiorum dei gloriam, to the greater glory of God. It is the motto of the great society of Jesus. Dear graduates, as you go forth from this place, for all that you will do, and for the wonderful men and leaders you will become, never forget, do all for the greater glory of God. God bless you and congratulations. Before beginning the awarding of diplomas to the class of 2014, may I remind you to please hold your applause until all of the graduates have received their diplomas. Each and every student and their families have the right to hear his name called. Please note that air horns or other noisemakers are prohibited as they only disrupt these solemn proceedings and detract from the dignity of today's event. We also ask that if you take photos or videos only from outside the area roped off by the stanchions. I would like to call your attention to the program which recognizes those graduates whose academic performance over their four years has earned them the graduating designation of cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. And now, Father Hanwell, as the principal of Fairfield College Preparatory School, it is my distinct pleasure 
to present to you the members of the class of 2014 who have successfully completed our prescribed course of studies. Anthony Michael Abazia. Christian Michael Alvarado. John Aquino, Jr. John Joseph Arnold. James Robert Artell. Andres Ayala III. Christian Curran Backey. Trevor Robson Baker. Daishe Baldwin. Aaron Christopher Ball. Keith William Banker. Austin William Barrett. Nicholas Michael Bartoli. Stephen Saunders Bayless. Spencer Francis Bebon. Matthew Robert Beck. Brendan Daniel Bernard. Jake William Berry. Sean Michael Blake. Tanner James Blank. Curran Patrick Bloom. Riley Christopher Bloom. Hunter Joseph Bond. Jake Edward James Botel. Ryan Paul Rickner. Terrence Anthony Brown. Stephen Edmund Cadu. Robert Lawrence Cafiro. Liam Richard Cahill. Travis J. Cantu. Austin Danforth Canwell. Connor Michael Carey. Pascal Chidibere Chukwu. <laughs> Wesley Chacon. Thomas Constantine Cirillo. John Nicholas Clark.
William O'Donnell Klein. Brandon Christopher Cole. Elliot Gregory Collins. Brian James Connolly. Michael Andreas Conti. Angelo John Capitelli. William Joseph Corona. Anthony Michael Cosenza. Logan Keo Cotter. Austin Thomas Crane. Nicholas David Crowell. Sergio Leonel Cruz. Bjorn Connor Davis. Alexander Alaya Dakota Fredericks. John Philip DeMarco. Michael Allen DiVincenzo. Wade Russell Dodge. Daniel John Donahue. Jeffrey Richard D'Onofrio. Nicholas Alexander Dosky. Christoph Avery Duenas. Tyler John Duffy. Connor Patrick Duggan. Christopher Jonathan Dumont. Ryan Avery Duncan. Christopher Hurley Dunn. Darren Justin Edwards. David Bernard Evans. Timothy Leo Falvey Jr. John Michael Ferguson. Chance Dean Phillip. Justin Armand Flahan. Brandon James Fleming. Tyrone Austin Florizard. Albert James Forno. Tony Rochelle Fox II. Robert John Fredericks.
Robert Joseph Fumai. James Dean Fennell III. Thomas Nelson Gagney. Owen Brendan Gallagher. Thomas Joseph Garzillo. Tucker Joseph Gaby. Patrick August Gerard. Scott Adam Gabadel Ascari. Mark Daniel John Gregorio. Brett David Gibbs. Kevin Robert Gilluli. Samuel Lyons Gilmore. Tavon Marquise Gibbons Hunter. Christian Xavier Gonzalez Caraballo. Peter Andrew Brennan. Alexander Michael Grunt. Christopher Ernest Gutierrez. Charles McCann Haley. Daniel Cameron Castillo Hamar. Justin Hahn. John Joseph Finneran Harrison. Michael Patrick Hennessy. Alec Burton Hilton. Charles Beauchamp Hinnant. Jake Kenneth Hohen. Nicholas Charles Hunter. Tristan Holland Jespe. Anthony Brian Johnson. Gregory Joseph Cabasacalian Jr. Brent Daniel Kaiserman. Jerm Sandus Kamlani III. Connor William Casper. Thomas Michael Kavulic. Ethan Christopher Key. John George Kecklick. Dora Christopher Kelly.
Timothy R. Kiernan. Raphael David Kinney. Kenneth Howard Coaches. Brendan Joseph Lockabell. Robert Michael Lancia. Matthew Richard Lee. Cole Justin Lewis. Alan Edward Linky. Dean Fillmore Lockery. Boykin Loya. Colin Barker Lomnitzer. Edward Porter Long. William James Lapata III. Philip Kenneth Lynch, Jr. Robert James Lynn. John Michael Mannion. Dakota Brooks Lee Mann. David Byron Martens, Jr. Jairo Enrique Martinez Yepes. John Paul Mazarik. Liam John Mason. John Tucker McGarity. Matthew Bedford McKinney. Zachary Wells McNulty. Andrew Moreland McPhee. Colby Thomas Monachino. Daniel James Moran. Bernardo Moreno. Luke Robert Morrison. Sean Joseph Morrison. Ryan Patrick Morrissey. James Patrick Mulliken. Billy Ricky Narvez. Joshua Joao Nascimento. James Thomas Namia. Peter Dewey Nestor. Nestor. Aiden Francis O'Brien. John Haley O'Connell.
Thomas Patrick O'Connor. Brian Spencer O'Donnell. Robert John O'Keefe. Liam Francis O'Reilly. Andrew John Ostrowski. Matthew Joseph Onis. Keith Michael Petway. Patrick Joseph Lebrun Holy. Zishan Javit Patiawala. Jonathan Paul Pruden. Richard Joseph Quigley IV. Robert Francis Branzilla. Nicholas Stephen Rapillo. Tyler Robert Rapillo. Sheldon Alexander Rawson. Connor Patrick Richardson. Jonathan Joseph Angelo Rodriguez. Antonio Michael Rosa. John Robert Royak. Quinn Throckmorton Rudner. Michael Barrett Ruther. Logan George Ryan. Brian Anthony Santiago. Stephen John Sapo. Robert Mariano Scarpetti III. Christian Edward Schlegel. William James Schlegel. Matthew Arthur Scholl. Nicholas Michael Schurman. Stephen Paul Schwartz. John Norris Schwarer. Andrew Buckley Scott. Colin James Skull. Luke Ryan Sheernan. Aaron Nathaniel Simkovitz. Malik Michael Simpson. Austin Michael Sims. Jeffrey Allen Skiba. 
William Burke Smith. Adam Christopher Stanko. Jerry, Jeremy Jeremiah Pajaro Stark. Eric Philip Steinborn. Ryan Christopher Steinborn. Stuart Thomas Stritzel. Brendan Craig Sullivan. Robert John Sylvester III. Brian Anthony Tacconi. Matthew Gino Tarantino. Jeremy Nelson Torres. Stephen Patrick Totoro. Maxwell Thomas Trudeau. Fernando Baldovinos. Robert James Bayless III. Richard Lawrence Vanderberge III. Maximilian Van Munching. Adam Samuel Beer. Andrew Michael Begliante. Friley Antonio Ventura. John Paul Vontel. Stephen Patrick Walsh. Ryan McCauley Ward. Nicholas George Wargo. Brian Fenton Whalen. Matthew Harry Wickman. Donald Stephen Williams, Jr. Stuart Raymond Davidson Williams. Matthew Richard Wood. Michael David Workman. Luis Enrique Zamora. Ryan Russell Zentner. David Francis Zelensky. Gentlemen, congratulations.
It is the goal of all it is the goal of all Jesuit high schools to strive to go beyond academic excellence to develop men and women of conscience, compassion, and action so that they will be able to function wholly and positively within the complexities of the modern world, bringing to it moral insight, reasoned judgment, and a willingness to act in the cause of human justice. We would like to recognize outstanding graduates who have excelled in embodying the following characteristics of a Jesuit education. Intellectually competent, open to growth, religiously oriented, committed to doing justice, and loving. In this spirit, Fairfield Prep is privileged to present the following special awards. The St. Edmund Campion SJ Award honors that senior who has demonstrated an enthusiastic quest for academic excellence, which leads him to explore the possibilities of self, faith, goodness, and justice in the world. This year's recipient attending the University of Notre Dame is John Clark. The St. Francis Xavier SJ Award honors that student who by his choices and his actions has taken advantage of the full array of opportunities and experiences offered throughout his four years at prep. This year's award is given ex aequo, attending Princeton University, Sergio Cruz, and University of Michigan, Wade Dodge. The St. John Berkman's SJ Award honors that senior whose faith has led him to become a man of conscience, compassion, and action in the service of others for the greater glory of God. This year's recipient attending the University of Rochester, Connor Casper. The Reverend Pedro Arupe SJ Award honors that senior whose vitality of faith frees him to be a man for others. This year's recipient attending Columbia University, Jairo Martinez. The St. Peter Claver SJ Award honors that senior who has distinguished himself by his leadership and his commitment to the preferential option for the poor. This year's recipient, attending Washington and Lee University, Austin Crane. The Jesuit Secondary Education Association Award honors that senior who has distinguished himself as a well-rounded, intellectually competent individual who is open to growth, religious, loving, and committed to doing justice in generous service to the people of God. 
This year's recipient attending California Polytechnic State University is Andrew Ostrowski. To our newest alumni, the great class of 2014, gentlemen, while you are receiving a lot of well-deserved attention today, there is one very special group of people among us who should not be overlooked, your parents. Sometime today, I would ask you each in your own way and words to thank them for the countless gifts of life and love they have given to you these many years. From the very first day they held you in their arms, through teaching you how to walk and talk, to read, pray, and play nicely with your friends, or get that time out time, your parents, often without due recognition, have given each of you more than you ever realize. Now, would our new alumni please stand and give your parents a special, special standing ovation. Fairfield Prep now sends you forth with diplomas, but also with much more than that. We send you forth with love and with God's blessing. To bless you, I invite all of Prep's faculty and administration, the members of the class of 1964, and the parents of our graduates to stand. And I invite all of those who are now standing to extend your hand with me in blessing over these fine young men. I ask our newly minted graduates to bow their heads in blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. After the singing of the alma mater, we ask that all of our guests remain in their seats until the administration, the faculty, and the graduates have exited from the ceremony. And then please join our graduates at a reception which will play, take place on the lawn adjacent to the Barone Campus Center. That will be to your right as you exit from the gym. Please stand for the alma mater. Stay standing for the alma mater.